Hi, I'm Joanne Banco, author and online educator at Let's Go Sew. So. Have you ever wanted to just freshen up your dining room and maybe add some, um, some chair pads to your seating? Well, I think if you thought that way, you're gonna love this, this, this project today. Um, what I've done is just taken some plain fabric, created some striking piping, and created basically a slipcover style cushion. So let me show you the, the finished one here. I've got ties that attach to the chair. I've got a nice, like I said, fancy cording that I created myself um, on the machine with decorative stitches. And then a slipcover for the opening ear. It's very easy, just like you would have maybe for a, an interchangeable pillow and a place to put that foam cushion. So let's talk about supplies. First of all, you wanna start with um, a home decor weight fabric so that you have some, some, you know, some stability there. And uh, certainly could be a print and you certainly could use uh, purchased piping if you want to, if you find something that, that you like in that. But this is a fun technique I think you're gonna like. As far as the, the cushion foam itself, I love working with this foam that's called densified foam. And one of the things I like about it is it's very, very, very easy to trim. So unlike other foams that require you to use, you know, special type of electric um, cutting systems, this you can just use good quality heavy duty shears and you can trim, trim that right off. So it's very easy to do. For the pattern, you could take your existing chair and you could put paper over it and you could literally trace around the shape and you could create a pattern that way. You're gonna need a pattern obviously for the top and this is size, so it's a little bit smaller than my actual chair. And I did not add any seam allowance to this. That's usually your first thought, but we're adding piping and that a piping is essentially gonna take up, you know, give that outer area the same amount that seam allowance would have given us when we sewed together. If you choose to forego the piping, then yes, add whatever seam allowance, three eighths of an inch, half inch, quarter inch, whatever you want. So I have a top piece, and then I've also got the, the back piece. So the back piece needs to have that overlap. You can see here my back piece, my top piece, and you've gotta have that area there. So that is cut the same size, but with an extension on the upper half. So I've just labeled mine pattern A, pattern B. And then you've got the uh, pattern for the foam. Now the foam, you want it to be a little bit smaller than your actual cushion. Now I would err on the side of a little bit smaller first time around. You can always trim that up if you find that it's too tight of a fit and trim that, you know, trim that down a little bit more so that fits a little more um, uh, snugly in there. But I start with about a half inch, so that would um, fit on there. And I just simply lay it on my foam. Uh, make sure you, you know, if you're gonna use this size, you should be able to use a foam that's kind of a standard size. But you may need to shop for foam that's a little bit bigger in size. Okay, so let's go ahead and head over to the machine and I'm gonna show you how I did the piping technique. So I started off with a piece of bias that um, is, of course, to make my piping. I've got a decorative foot on the machine, and I have selected a decorative stitch from my decorative menu, one of the geometric stitches. They're known as elongation stitches, and they're called that because you can actually set the, uh, the length and then um, the pattern repeat so that it's a little bigger or a little bit smaller. So I've set mine to be a little smaller and I've also shortened the stitch length a little bit so that I've got a nice tight stitch. I've got a piece of tearaway stabilizer underneath and I wanna go right along the center of this. So I'm gonna turn on a feature here where I've got a guideline and I'm gonna move that guideline to the center. And I, you could chalk mark this, so if you wanna be right in the center, that, that would be a good way to do it. I'm gonna just use this guideline and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna eyeball it. So I'm just gonna sew that decorative stitch. Oh, I've got it set for one motif. We wanna do it for a row, because we wanna continue. And I would do this with an embroidery type thread, so a shiny thread on top. And then for the bottom, you could use uh, the same thread or you could use a bobbin weight thread, the same type you would use for embroidery the, in a white color, thinner and it'll stay on the bottom. So let's just do a little, little bit more of this so that you can see. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and end that. Take that out. Okay, so you can see how pretty that is. So the next step then would be to simply tear away my stabilizer. 
Get rid of all that excess. And now I'm gonna change the foot. So I'm gonna take the decorative foot off. I'm also gonna change my thread really quick here. Back to regular sewing thread. You do wanna use good quality, strong sewing thread for the actual construction of this project. Okay, get that needle threaded real quick. And I'm gonna go back to the um, standard sewing screen there. And I'm gonna start with a regular straight stitch. I'm gonna now put on a piping foot. And I wanna show you the underside of this foot has grooves. So that's gonna allow me to guide right along that cording very easily. Another option would be to use a foot that has uh, an adjustable um, uh, part on it for doing cording. They, it's, it's known as a zipper slash cording foot, okay? I'm gonna take my cording, and I've used a, hmm, I don't quite remember the size, but I know it's, a, it's a, just a little bit more than a, a quarter inch. That works perfect with this foot. I'm gonna wrap this around the cording, okay? And I'm gonna get that underneath the groove in the foot. And my first step is just gonna to be to simply uh, run this along that cord with a basting length. Okay, so I'm gonna increase that stitch length. Okay, and you wanna get that right underneath there. I think I cut this little strip just a little skimpy. So make sure when you cut yours that you wrap it around your cord and do a test. You're gonna see on my finished piece in a minute here that I did a better, I did a better job on that. But you see, you want that to just go right along the edge, but not real snug, not real tight. Let me cut this and show you my finished one. Okay, because this is how you want it to look. So I use a, a standard straight stitch. I knew this was gonna be a little bit of handling, but you'd use a, a little bit longer, closer to a basting. So it's really nice and, and close up to that cord, but not quite as close as it's gonna be when we stitch the final stitch, okay? So we'll set this aside for just a minute, get that mess out of the way, and let me just show you the how I created the ties. So I've got the steps here for you. So for the ties, you wanna also, at least if you wanna do it the way I did it, cut that out on, on the bias. So I cut bias strips of fabric. I think it just makes a nicer tie when you tie it. Bias is always more flexible and more smooth. So rather than cutting on the straight grain, I cut on a bias. They may be a little stiff if you cut them on the straight grain. And I used a special stitch that's called a stretch stitch. I call it a lightning stitch because it looks like a lightning bolt. And I did that because when you turn this right side out, you're gonna have a little bit of pull on it and that'll keep this, uh, the seam from popping. I want you to notice one more thing that I did. I started out here my stitching with a very wide opening at the top. And that's so that when I go to turn this right side out, I use a standard loop turner. It's gonna allow me to slip through that area easier and pull that right out to the right side. I'll give you another little tip on this. When you do turn these right side out, um, wet, get something that you could wet your fingers a little bit so you can work it down with a little bit of, of damp finger. Okay, so that's how you make the ties. Let's set that aside. And now I wanna show you what I would have done for the next step would be to baste my cording to my, my top piece. So I've already done that partially. I wanna get back underneath here because I wanna show you how I finish the ends. That's always a little bit tricky. And I want you to see how, what I did here, I. Um, put the cording now in the opposite side of the foot. There are two grooves in this foot which make it, make it perfect for that. All right, so again, I'm gonna move now. Just, I'm gonna go stay with the basting stitch, but I'm gonna move my needle over just a little bit to the right so that it's um, not as close to the piping. Okay, and I've got this pinned raw edges together. My piping is right in that groove. I wanna tell you too, a little trick here, when you're sewing piping to a curved edge, always push in that piping a little bit, ease it in. You can also clip it if you need to, but when that piping turns out to the outside, it's gonna go from a, a smaller area to a larger area. And if you don't ease that in, when you turn it out, it's gonna pull a little bit and you could get a little bit of a puckered seam. Okay, so I'm gonna go all around here, 
please um, uh, go ahead and feel free to use your uh, presser foot up and down and pivot that a little bit so that you can work that around. And what I want to show you here is how I cross these two ends over. I've already done this first end and hopefully you can see there what I've done is I've opened that up and I want to trim out all of that excess cording where they're going to overlap. So I'm going to snip that away and I'm going to do the same thing on this end. So I'm just going to open that up a little bit, snip that away, and then I'm going to literally crisscross these two ends. Now if you notice here, I've got a pin. That is the exact center of my uh, top piece. Because when you look at that, when that's actually finished, you want that overlap to be right on the center. Take that pin out, right over. All right, I have got that part done. There's the presser foot. So you can see how perfectly that overlaps. And then when that's turned to the right side, you're gonna barely notice where those two have crossed. That really makes it easy, and I think it's a, um, a much easier way than taking it and trying to fold it over, especially if you've done this decorative stitch, decorative stitch technique, you're gonna have a little bit of extra bulk there. Okay, so now what do we do next? Well, we go to our pieces that are already layered, and I've got them pinned together, so there's my front piece, there's my bottom A and bottom B with that overlap. I've got just got some safety pins to keep that in there together. And now I'm going to go back to a regular standard stitch length. So that would be 2.5. Doesn't really matter where you start on this. Remember that's all basted in place, but um, it's easier if you start on a little bit of a, of a straight edge. So again, that's going to go in the groove. And what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to make sure that my needle is snugged up way close to where that piping is. So you may want to do a little bit of a test because the different thicknesses of fabric will make a difference. But I'm going to move that needle over to the left so that it's very, very close to that piping. And you, you kind of get, um, you can do it a little bit by sight, but you'll get a little bit of a feel for where that should be. And like I said, if you do a little test piece, then you'll know exactly what your setting should be. And then I'm going to be able to go all around and finish that seam, get those layers all together, just like that. When you're done, you'll turn everything right side out. You'll have beautiful cording like this. Slip your cushion inside, and you are ready to dress up your dining room with new, beautiful cushions. Visit the website. We've got free instructions.